Hello and welcome to Prophecy File Briefing. Today I want to bring you a short excerpt from my good friend Jeff Kinley, who joined me recently right here for the Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference at Pace Assembly. I'm sure that you'll be blessed by the entirety of both of the sessions that he brought. But let me give you a little excerpt from my friend Jeff Kinley at the Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference. Don't you want to be a part uh, of this amazing, precious bride? And if today, if you don't know for sure, I'm talking about 100% sure that if you walked out of that door and got hit by a bus, you'd go to heaven. If you don't know that for sure, you need to make sure today because you get in on the greatest deal of the century, the greatest deal of eternity in knowing Jesus Christ. Listen, when this event happens, you and I are gonna realize how imperfect our vision of Christ really was. We're gonna realize that guys like me didn't do a good enough job at explaining how wonderful Jesus really is. Uh, he's more beautiful and glorious than we ever could imagine, and it is in that moment that we will realize why Paul wrote the words, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, there are no prophetic signs that have to take place before the rapture occurs. We're not told to look for signs, we're told to look for, for, the, for the Lord himself. We're never told to look for antichrist, but we are told to look for the Christ. So Jeff, what in the world uh, is Jesus waiting on? You wanna know what he's waiting on? Two things, number one, he's waiting for the stage to be set for revelation, which is happening before our very eyes, and he's waiting for the lost to be saved. There will be a last person to be saved in the church age. Who is that person? I don't know. Will it be a 13 year old girl at youth camp? who gave her life to Christ? Will it be a man in, in drug rehab who's come to the end of his road? Will it be a guy like George who finally gives his life to Christ after being in prison? Who's it gonna be? We don't know. Maybe it's one of you today. We don't know, but God sure does. Years ago, there was a man by the name of Sir Ernest Shackleton. He was a great British explorer. And in 1914, he put an ad in a London newspaper that said this, men wanted for hazardous journey Long hours, bitter cold, months without light, safe return doubtful, reward in case of success. Shackleton thought that maybe five or 10 men would respond to the ad, but he was so overwhelmed to learn that over 500 men responded uh, because they wanted to accompany the knighted explorer to be the first to cross the Arctic, uh, the Antarctic continent rather, on foot and write themselves into the history books. Shackleton finally settled on a crew of 28 men each of them were a specialist in their own area of expertise. There were doctors, cooks, carpenters, seasoned uh, sailors, all men filled with anticipation upon accompanying Shackleton on the great voyage. And they set out to sail, sailing to Antarctica on their ship called the Endurance. But soon after, the Endurance became stuck in the thick ice, and her crew worked feverishly to free her from the impending frozen death. But despite their efforts, the gradual movement of the megaton ice flows crushed in on the hull of the ship and, and crushed its timber like matchsticks. Shackleton gave the orders to abandon ship and the men began to camp on the ice flows for over two months, braving the bitter sub-zero cold. But then the flows were breaking up and drifting in unfriendly directions. So Shackleton and his men uh, began the slow trek toward the open sea. Then launching their three tiny lifeboats, they began sailing on April 19th, 1916. They began rowing for Elephant Island 100 miles away. Can you imagine a rowboat going 100 miles? Finally, after a perilous journey, they reached their goal, an uninhabited cold rock located now, they were now 800 miles from any civilization. This is in 1916. So Shackleton, with his options narrowing, he began to make uh, some serious decisions. He decided that he would re-rig one of his lifeboats. He would take his captain, Captain Worsley, and four other men. They would climb into this re-rig lifeboat and set sail for South Georgia Island, 800 miles away. But before Shackleton left, he gathered his men on the beach in sub-zero weather, and he looked them in the eye, each of them, and promised each of them that he would return for them. With the odds exponentially stacked against them, the men waved goodbye to their beloved captain, whom they affectionately called the boss. They climbed in, uh, into the, the lifeboat and they saw them sail away. And if Shackleton would fail in his mission to reach South Georgia 800 miles away, there would be no hope of rescue for his men ever. No one even knew they were there and no one even cared. World War I had begun. The men then camped for some five months 
under their lifeboats, eating whatever food they could scrounge up. Miraculously, they didn't know this, but after only 16 days of sailing in wild and furious weather, Shackleton and his small crew sighted land 800 miles in 16 days. Arriving on South Georgia Island, they were dismayed to discover they had landed on the wrong side of the island. Now they had to trek across the entire island in waist-deep snow. When they finally arrived there at the village, they looked so harrowed and so terrifying that people ran from them thinking they were ghosts or some sort of monsters. Finally, Shackleton convinced a boat uh, to launch and to go look for his lost men. But the ice flows kept the, the whaling boats from leaving the harbor there. Five times over five months, Shackleton tried to get out. Finally, he was able to get a Chilean vessel and get to uh, his men who were there uh, on the beach. When he got to the island, he didn't know if any of them would be alive or if one of them would be alive. But sailing through gale force winds, he finally got to the island. Upon sighting the beach, there he saw his men ready and waiting. Captain Worsley took out his binoculars and he looked on the beach and did a head count. And he turned to his boss and said, they're all alive, Skipper. They're all coming home. You lost not a one of them. Contemplating their narrow escape, they, they jumped into the lifeboat, got onto the ship and sailed away. And just then the ice flows closed up behind them, but they were on their way back home. Contemplating this, this escape, Shackleton remarked to his men, he said this. He said, it was fortunate that you were all packed and ready to go. And one of them looked at him and said, we never gave up hope. Whenever the sea was clear of ice, we all rolled up our sleeping bags and we reminded one another, the boss may come today. The boss may come today. Jeff Kinley joined me as my special guest for this year's Prophecy Files Conference, and I can assure you that the depth of the teaching that he brought will be a blessing to you. You can get the entirety of his message online at paceassembly.org. Don't miss it. Go right there, right now, and get the Word of God inside of you. I promise you, it will help you to be prepared for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Till the next time, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.